and would open them to two passages of Scripture. One very familiar. And the other familiar in its concept. If you would open firstly to Psalms 23. In Psalms 23, we'll read verse 1, the first verse of that chapter. And then if you would turn also to Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 31. which is at the end of that chapter. Psalm 23 and Ezekiel 34. Verse 31, uh, the two of them read, as follows, Psalms 23, verse 1 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Ezekiel, chapter 34, verse 31 says, You are my sheep, the sheep of my pasture. And I am your God, declares the Sovereign Lord. Amen. Amen. The grass withers, and the flower thereof fadeth away, but the word of our God shall stand forever. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. This morning I want to use as a title uh, these words. I'm just the under shepherd. I'm just the under shepherd. This was not the first time that you heard the 23rd Psalm. It was not the first time that you have said the words of the first verse of the 23rd Psalm. Uh -huh. In fact, if I had merely asked you, what is Psalm 23 verse 1, you could probably tell me without even looking. That's right. The 23rd Psalm is, it, it's an interest, the, the, the 23rd Psalm is an interesting chapter. Because when you're going through moments of great stress, when trials and tribulations are heavy upon you, you can go to the 23rd Psalm and begin to read it and you can find peace. You can go to any passage of scripture, but there's something about the 23rd Psalm that allows you to feel calm. I want to explain to you a little bit about what that is and, and explain a little bit about where we'll be going in several of the weeks to come. The 23rd Psalm is actually written in a literary form called a romance. A uh, remez is always interesting because it, it is a, uh, it has hidden or deeper meaning than the words by themselves might suggest. Uh, it is not unfamiliar in the Bible, 
because Jesus was the master of the remains. Yes. Uh, let me give you an example. Uh, Jesus was speaking to a lady at a well. And as he spoke to the lady at the well, they had a conversation going back between the two of them. It was a point in time when Jesus said, if you would drink of the water that I have, you would never thirst again. Now what Jesus was saying went deeper than the mere words that he was saying. He was letting her know about some living water that would lead into an everlasting life. Yes. He went on and had a conversation with another man. His name was Nicodemus. Mm -hmm. He met Nicodemus at night. Nicodemus had some questions. And he said, if you want to spend eternity with God, you're going to have to be born again. His words were deeper than what it said on the surface. And in the 23rd Psalms, y'all, what we find is a romance. Now, let me give you an example. Uh, the, the psalm uh, 23 verse 1 that you know by memory has so much more to it than we were even knowing. Mm -hmm. The part of the reason why the 23rd Psalm gives us such peace is because the name and the description of God is repeated to us over and over and over again. That God as Jehovah is described to us in throughout the entire 23rd Psalm. Watch this. Psalms 23 verse 1 says, The Lord is my shepherd. Yes, he is. Now, the deeper meaning in that is that that describes him as being Jehovah Raha. Uh -huh. That's his name, Jehovah Raha, the Lord my shepherd. Yes. I shall not want. Mm -hmm. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is our provider. But we're going to follow these through, through the whole 23rd Psalm. But, but today I just want to focus on Jehovah Raha, the Lord, our shepherd. Yes. And I, I, I say it this way. There are many, many times when people innocently but mistakenly refer to me or people in my position, other pastors, as the shepherd of that church, the shepherd of South Calvary, the shepherd of whatever church we're at. I, I, I have to let you know I'm, I'm just the under shepherd. I'm just the under shepherd. I, I'll tell you what, y'all, I love South Calvary. I love South Calvary. I love the people of South Calvary. I love the ministry at South Calvary. I love and consider it an honor to be the tenth person to stand behind this sacred desk as the pastor. But sometimes my humanity gets in the way. My humanity gets in the way. Sometimes I get in my emotions. Sometimes I mess up. Sometimes I say things that I shouldn't have said. Sometimes I do things that I shouldn't have done. Your shepherd. Yes, he is. 
The Lord is my shepherd. Yes. And because of him, I shall not want. In, in the 23rd Psalm and also in the book uh, of Ezekiel, especially in the 34th chapter of Ezekiel, there is a lot of talk about sheep. A lot of talk, a lot of talk about sheep uh, in there. Uh, um, Y'all, I believe this. I believe this. This is this is uh, this is a theory that I have. This is just a theory that that I have. I, I believe that the only reason that God created sheep was was so that uh, we could see us the way that God sees us. I believe that. I, I believe that the reason he created sheep was so that we could see us the way that he sees us. Because you do know God calls us sheep. Yes, he does. In fact, in fact, uh, there, there's some things that you need to understand about sheep. If you really want to understand, understand this. Sheep, uh, sheep are defenseless. Yeah. Sheep don't have claws. Sheep don't have sharp teeth. They don't have fangs. Sheep aren't like bees. They don't have stingers. They, they're not like scorpions. They can't sting you. Uh, bee, uh, uh, I'm sorry, sheep, sheep are, are not like boa constrictors. They can't grab onto you and hold you and squeeze you into compliance. No, no, no. There, there is a defense mechanism I've seen in some sheep. Just a few of them. Their defense mechanism is this. That when you get to a point, you scare them, they will faint. They are defenseless. But I believe that God created sheep so that we would be able to see us the way that God sees us. Because, y'all, we are defenseless as well. Y'all know, we, we are defenseless against the enemy. By ourselves, understand, we are defenseless against the enemy. When, when the enemy is introduced in the Bible, he is described as being the most subtle, the most sly, the most slicky, the most tricky of any of the other creatures. And then later on, we're told that if you want to, uh, you get to avoid the wiles of the devil, then you got to put on the whole armor of God. You can't do it by yourself. You are defenseless. In fact, another thing about sheep is that sheep are not that bright. No, 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 sheep, sheep are not, they're just not that bright. Uh, I, it, it, in order to understand better, what I did is I, um, I, I went to YouTube and, and, and I, I typed in, this was my search, are sheep really dumb? <laughs> And a video popped up, and, and I watched this video, and what it showed was this. It showed a sheep that was running along a fence line in a country area. Okay, there was a field on the other side, and the sheep was on this side. It was trying to get to the field area, and so it was running along the, the, uh, the wire fence line. And that every now and then it would stop and it would put its head through one of the little squares in the fence and try to go through the fence. And he would run, he would pull his head out and he'd run down a little farther and he found another area, he stuck his head in the little hole trying to get through the fence and, and he couldn't do it. Y'all, then watch this. Then he did this. He ran by an area where the fence had fallen down. And he went right past the area where the fence fell down, went a couple feet further, turned around, put his head in the fence, 
and tried to go through there. I'm just trying to let you know sheep are not that intelligent. Okay. I don't want to call them dumb because that just sounds so bad. <laughs> but but, but you know, here's the thing, the reason we believe that, the reason that we believe that, because we say that we wouldn't do that. I wouldn't have done that. If I seen the hole, the big 10-foot gap in the fence, I would have gone through the 10-foot gap. But you know, here's the thing, but we, we look at that because we, you know, we are human beings, we, we build cars, we, we build computers. We build beautiful houses. We, we, we build rockets that can go from the earth all the way to the moon, up into the stratosphere, and can come back where the people inside can come back and safely put their foot on a we, we compare ourselves to the sheep, and compared to us, the sheep are dumb. But I believe that God created sheep so that we could see us the way that God sees us. Because yeah, we do create automobiles. Yeah, yeah we do create computers. Yeah. And yes, we also do create rocket ships that go to the stratosphere, into the, the higher regions of the universe and come back down. But y'all, there is not one of us that can step out of nowhere and create everything out of nothing. We ain't got nothing on the, you can't even understand the concept of eternity. And that's basic stuff to God. I believe that he created sheep so that we could see us the way that God sees us. Amen. And here's the thing about if you have these defenseless And dumb sheep, <laughs> they have this tendency. They have this tendency to wander. You can give them everything that they need. You can give them green pastures. You can create a stream of cool, flowing water in the midst of the green pastures. And do you know that those sheep will still wander away even though they have everything that they need right here in their presence. They'll still wander away. For some reason they think that out there is still better than in here. Yeah. And isn't that how we are? Yeah, in fact, isn't that how we got into all this mess? Yeah. Watch this. God created the Garden of Eden. Yes. The Garden of His Peace. He put every kind of Food, every kind of tree, and, and you could have the berries, you could have all that it had to offer, everything that was in the Garden of Eden, you could have of it except one single solitary tree. Don't eat from that one. Temptation. But sheep are dumb. And they think they know what's good for them. And it will cause them sometimes to wander in places where they shouldn't go. God calls us sheep. But he knew this as well. Sheep need a shepherd. God knew sheep needed a shepherd. In, in Ezekiel chapter 34, it, it ends with God saying, uh, um, uh, you are my sheep. You are the sheep of my pasture. And I am your God. He, he said that. He said that. He, he said those words to them. He said that. Uh, but understand this, that at, at, before you get to that point, there was some other stuff going on. I'm just going to describe. I, I gave you the end of it, but let me tell you what happened from the top down. Um, God found some men. He found some men and he gave them a job. And their job was to be shepherds. And as shepherds, then their responsibility was to tend to the sheep. 
God found some men and he gave them a job. Their job was to be shepherds and their responsibility was to watch over, to love and to protect the sheep. That's what he told them to do. But y'all, there's a thing that all of us have experienced at some point in time, and it's this. Nobody cares about your stuff the way that you care about your stuff. And God experienced that because here's what the Bible goes on to say. It said it got to a point in time that he looked down and he saw his sheep was scattered all over the place. Here's the picture that he painted. He said, I looked down and my sheep were all up on the, on the mountainside. And my sheep were all over the hillside. And he said, my sheep had scattered all over the world. There were other animals that were devouring my sheep. And then this is the part that got him. And nobody's even looking for them. And now you might be saying, so, yeah, that's a terrible thing. But what's that got to do with me? Well, today, right now, God is building up the body of Christ. He, he, is, he is building, he's bringing souls into the body of Christ. And, and he has decided that what I'll do is I will partner with mankind. And I will use them. And in fact, what I'll do is I'll give them a job. And when you were born again, you received a gift from the Holy Spirit. You received a spiritual gift. And, and your spiritual gift is the tool that God designed for you to use. He designed it for you to use, and you would exercise your gift in ministry in your local church. Uh -huh. But I say this to you. Some of y'all have never shown up to work. Uh -oh. yeah. oh, this is the tough time. Some have never shown up to work. Um, in the military, I think the way they say it, you didn't you didn't come ready to uh, for duty. You just never showed up. You were away without leave. We can't afford to not show up. Now, I say that, but some of y'all, that's not the case. Uh, some others are, are what, what we, we used to when I, when I was uh, working in industry. Uh, some are what we call uh, no call, no shows. No call, no shows. Okay, a no call, no show is someone who has a job. Uh, they are. Uh, they understand that they're expected to be there, but they don't even take the time to call in. And <coughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not feeling good today. <coughs> so I don't, no, don't, don't even bother to do that. They just don't show up. Yo, know, we we had a we had a young man. His name was Chucky. Uh, Chucky was, was probably my most famous no call, no show. Uh, Chucky would, would show up on Tuesday. And then you wouldn't see Chucky again until Friday because Friday was payday. Yeah, I say that because there's some Chuckies in the church. They won't come to practice. They won't come to teach a preparation meeting. They won't come to the usher board meeting. But when it comes Sunday morning, they show up with the uniform on. 
show up with the gown on. Show up all ready. Because they were a no call, no show before. But when it comes time for the glory, there they are. I may not be the under shepherd too much longer. Because there's another kind. Yeah, there's another, there's another, there's another. There, there's another who does show up. They do show up, but y'all, that's all. They, 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 just, they just showed up. The, the, their body was present, but they left their heart at home. I'm saying this, but they, they, they ain't gonna say this, but the Bible says that I'm to present my body as a living sacrifice. Yo, you cannot sacrifice without your heart. God doesn't need your stuff. God wants your heart. And these are the same ones that, that will say, uh, uh, girl, I, I can't come, to, I can't go to the movies with you today. I got to go to practice. I can't, uh, I can't go because I got to go to teacher's meeting. You don't have to do nothing. It should be an honor for you. It should be an honor for you to spend time perfecting your gift so that when you come into God's house, you can give him your most perfect praise. It should be an honor for you to spend your time studying God's word. So when it's teaching time, you're able to perfect your craft so you can give God your best work. It should be an honor, not an obligation, to serve on the deacon board. An honor, not an obligation, to stand behind this sacred desk and preach God's word. But God found some men and he gave them a job, made them shepherds, told them, I want you to tend to my sheep, but they let the sheep scatter. And he said something, he said something to them. He said this, he said, uh, uh, Got a problem with the shepherds. He said, "What well, he said? He says I'm against the shepherds. I'm against the shepherds uh, because of what they've done. They put themselves ahead of my sheep. I'm against them. And he, he, they've even he said that they were even eating the sheep. They were using their wool to make clothes for themselves." They put themselves ahead of the sheep and allowed the sheep to scatter. But even in the church today, nobody cares about his stuff the way that he cares about his stuff. And so you know what God says? And this is how we get to the end of chapter 34. He said, then I'll do it myself. I'll do it myself. He, he said this. He says, uh, I'll go out and I'll look for my sheep all by myself. He said, I'll deliver them out of the dark and cloudy places and I'll do it all by myself. He said, I'll bring them into their own land all by myself. I'll feed them in green pastures all by myself. I'll seek out the lost ones. I'll bring back the ones you drove away. I'll, I'll mend the ones that you broke. I'll strengthen the one that you made sick. And I'll do it all by myself. Yeah. And that's when he looked at you and me. And he said, you are my sheep. You are the sheep of my passion, and I am your God. You know what that means? That means the Lord is my shepherd. 
The Lord is my shepherd. Not somebody who gets paid by the hour. The Lord is my shepherd. Not somebody who show up on Friday for a paycheck. The Lord is my shepherd. Not somebody who will watch the clock until five o'clock. The Lord is my shepherd. I'm talking about somebody who loved you enough that while you were yet a sinner, while you had been scattered all over the world, while you were hanging out in the mountainside, hanging out on the hillside, scattered all over the world while sin was devouring you, he found you. Y'all know what it took to find me? Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Y'all, the Lord found me. He found me on a hill called Calvary. He found me with the crown of thorns on his head. He found me while he had nails in his hands and nails in his feet. Y'all, he found me on an old rugged cross where he died. He died one Friday, was buried in a borrowed shoe. He stayed there that Friday night. Saturday, he was still there, but church, early on the Sunday morning, God raised him from the dead, and my Jesus got up from the grave with all of the power of heaven and earth in his hands. And he lives even today. Even today, y'all, the Lord is my living shepherd. And because of him, I shall not want. I'm so glad he found me. I'm so glad he found me. I'm so glad I don't have to be lost anymore. But I'm just telling you, from my perspective, because I'm just the under shepherd. God bless you, church. Amen.